Beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, why is it that I make a dua or what is known as a supplication and I don't see the reply, the response? I don't see it sometimes. What's the reason? We need to know that Rasulullah has told us that whenever any one of you makes a dua, here we're speaking of supplicating, asking Allah for something, it is always responded to. Allah replies, Allah responds. Sometimes you get what you want as you want it, mashallah, the lucky ones. Sometimes you get what you want a little bit later on. Sometimes you get something in place of what you had asked because Allah knows that that is better for you. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps in store for you something in lieu of that prayer or that supplication in the akhirah. So this is all part and parcel of what Allah has chosen for us. We make a dua sometimes and we don't know that this is detrimental for me. And Allah through His mercy keeps it away from us. But today we want to go more direct. What am I taught before I make a dua? Before I call out to Allah, what should I be doing? Because we all have needs. Allah has created us such that we have needs. This world is imperfect. It's not perfect. If it was perfect, the value of paradise would have depleted and decreased. If we got what we wanted in this world, what is the point of going into Jannah? Because Jannah, we've been promised you get what you want. That means here you won't get what you want. That's what is meant by it. Because Allah is promising you something that your heart is always yearning for. I need this, I need that, but you're not getting it. I want good health, I want this, I want... And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look, there is a set of rules and regulations. You follow them and there will come a time when you will get just that. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. So before we call out to Allah, we need to ask ourselves a few questions. Number one, to start with, how is my slate? The slate between me and my maker, is it clean or does it have scratches or is it even there? What is meant by that? Let's take a look at the dua of Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam, which was one of the most powerful duas and he was granted it. He started it in a specific way. The Quran says Sulaiman alayhi salam said, he starts off by saying, Oh my Rabb, forgive me. Imagine he's a Nabi of Allah and he's a king at the same time. And he's saying, Oh my Rabb, forgive me. Why did Allah make mention of that in the Quran? For me and you to learn that look, he's about to ask something, but first he's clearing a slate. Oh my Rabb, forgive me. Forgive me. I really, I've done this, I've done that, and now I'm talking about ourselves. I've done this and that and so on. Ya Allah, I ask you for forgiveness for what I've done. I promise I'll never do this again. I won't do that. Ya Allah, there are certain sins I have committed that I don't even know. There are some things that I don't even consider anymore because of how bad the situation is. Let me tell you, walk into a mall in Santon. The mere fact that we're walking, there's haram happening every split second. You put your eyes there, haram, there, haram. Look down, the people selling magazines there. So we don't realize it, we know it, we acknowledge it that Ya Allah, the situation is so bad, we try our best. It's like when you're walking up a street, or sorry, when you're walking through a, a bush that, where you have a lot of thorns, how will you walk? You make sure that I'm not, I'm not being hurt by these thorns. So you lift your trowels and you move this way and you go, go the other way and that way in order that you don't get hurt. When it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you try your best to obey His command. The hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِذَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْ شَيْءٍ فَانْتَهُوا If I have prohibited you from something, you have no excuse to do it. وَإِذَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ When I have instructed you to do something, do it as best as you can, to the best of your ability. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Mm -hmm. So the difficulty we have today, we want to call out to Allah, we want to make dua to Allah, but we haven't cleared our slate. Like sometimes we tell the sisters, sister, you cannot 
Make a decision. May Allah grant us all goodness. We don't judge people. The judging is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But pieces of advice we are entitled to deliver. So we say a sister can be told that my sister, you're making dua, you have a difficulty, you have so many ten issues, and you are now saying, what is wrong? I'm making so much dua, Allah's not coming to my hell. But my sister, Allah asked you to do a few things and you haven't done. You haven't yet covered your hair. We're not talking about the face yet. That is another level that you could get to, alhamdulillah. We're starting grassroots. We're saying your hair to start with. The dress, your legs are showing, and you say, Ya Allah, I'm arthritis, Ya Allah, save me, guard me, cry, you know, grant me, my, my knees are so. But why did you expose them? Why are they exposed? Have you made tawbah yet for the fact that many years back you had them exposed? Allahu Akbar. Where did we learn that from? You're making a dua, that's correct. But clear your slate. Go back and see. Rub off whatever dirt there is on it. Say, Ya Allah, forgive me. I am undertaking, I will be a person who's going to obey your instruction. When Allah tells you, get up for Salatul Fajr, Wallahi Azim, it becomes so difficult to get up for Salatul Fajr. Yet, if someone were to tell you, brother, two in the morning, get up, there's one deal, you're going to strike 10,000 rand clean profit on condition you arrive here within 30 minutes. I don't want to say we'll arrive there in our undies, but half of us might. <laughs> Allah protect us. Because why? There's 10,000 rands to be made. Clean, it might be two in the morning, no problem. Wallahi, that Salatul Fajr is later than two in the morning and it is worth much more than 10,000 rands. You and I know. But then we are okay. We set our clocks intentionally for seven o'clock. Why? Because I've got to go to work. But we can't say, look, an hour earlier, two hours earlier, I had to work with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ فَذُو دُعَاءٍ then when evil inflicts man, he makes the broadest of du'as. Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Look at that. Is that not a type of hypocrisy? We know we need Allah, but we haven't listened to anything he has said, and we want him to listen to us. Hang on, who needs who here? Do we need Allah or does he need us? We need him, definitely. So let us clear the slate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to start with. And let's learn from the Anbiya, the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They always said, Ya Allah, forgive us. They did not need that, but they said it in order for us firstly to learn lesson and secondly for their rank to be raised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes you have a person who tells you, you know what, I didn't sin, so why should I engage in istighfar? Well, if you go back to some of the ahadith, you will find a certain term where we are taught to say, Astaghfiruka lima la a'lamuhu. Oh Allah, I am seeking forgiveness for that which I don't even know that I've committed. Because by default, I told you we're living in a non-Muslim environment. By default, even walking sometimes can be something so dangerous. And we've, we've forgotten about it. We're not saying don't walk, but we're saying be conscious of what Allah's instruction is. And you should know that sometimes sins are committed without you knowing. And you might think, okay, it's not intentional. Allah may not punish you for that, but it is your, it is the sign of your Iman when you say, Ya Allah, forgive me even for that, which I don't even know sometimes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Mm -hmm. Then you have someone who has planned a sin. They are planning sin. And this is why the hadith says, you want your dua to be accepted. It should not be a dua which is made for you to have a sin facilitated. I can give you an example, a living example. A person wants to go and commit adultery. So before he goes, he says, well, subconsciously, without even realizing, hey, I hope I'm not caught. Ya Allah, I hope I'm not caught. I hope nobody sees me. What are you doing? You're making a dua, asking Allah, Ya Allah, don't expose me. I'm about to go and do something very damaging, not only to me, but directly against your command. And I want you to help me by not exposing me. It is exactly like a thief going to steal and before he goes and steal, he's making two rakats of salah saying, Ya Allah, I'm going to go there tonight, make sure they all are asleep, Ya Allah, help me so that I don't, you know, nobody can hear me, let me take all the things and go out. It's the same example. For this one, we understand. The other one happens in our lives and we don't even think. As I said, subconsciously, we worry, we're looking here. But why? Because you're about to commit a sin. A person walking into a casino and he says, Hey, I hope Morana doesn't come here. Well, don't worry. He's not going to come there. Allah Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. May He make us from those who understand. My beloved brothers and sisters, the deen is so beautiful. Sometimes we just need a reminder. 
Sometimes we just need to be told, look, we make dua to Allah. Imagine if Allah had had us without having needs. Would we ever have made a dua to Allah? And this is why the hadith says, ibadah." You want to know what in essence is the worship of Allah? To supplicate, to call out to Him, to make dua to Him. Because the minute someone tells you, brother, can I please borrow from you 10,000 rands? He knows that you have it. And that means he believes you have the capacity to give him. So when you say, Ya Allah, I need happiness. You are worshipping Allah to such a degree that before you know it, you are already confirming to him, I know you are the owner of happiness. Because if he was not the owner, would you have asked him? No, you wouldn't. Like a beggar on the street. Would you ever go to a beggar on the street and say, please borrow me 10,000 rands? He'd probably tell you, boss, just give me 1% of what you want me to give you. Problem will be solved. There you are. You are asking him because you know that he has. And in the case of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the minute you say, Ya Allah, grant me shifa, grant me cure, what would you know? You would know that, look, I'm going to go to the doctors, I'm going to see the specialists, I have to do this, I have to do that. But Allah will guide the specialists to make the correct decisions in your regard, to quickly diagnose the matter, to hold the scalpel or the knife properly. To, to, you know, Allah is the one who grants that. So your dua, that's how it will help. But as I said, the prime condition, clear your slate with the maker. We're all going back to our maker. If you look at the laws of Islam, they are pure. Pure, yes, someone might say very strict. But wallahi, the solution to the problems of the globe lie in following the rules of Islam. Now let's take a little step further. We've made a dua, we've asked Allah to forgive us, we're asking Allah something reasonable. Sometimes there's a block between us and the response, the positive response. What is it? The condition of the heart. We have hatred against this one, we're backbiting that one, enmity against this one, jealousy with that one. Sorry, I'm pointing at the walls here, don't worry, inshallah. <laughs> and we have, you know, this problem and that problem, subhanAllah. And we are, we are rough people, we don't ever listen to others, we, we are not tolerant in our own homes. You know, we, we handle our women in such a way that uh, even if they were working for someone else, they would be treated better. Allahu Akbar. And then we want a dua to be accepted. So you're sitting on the musalla with your hands up. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, grant me. But there's a block between you and me. It's like you want to drive your motor vehicle, but it's clamped. So come out, jump out, get the clamp sorted out. Go and, organize, go and find out why it's clamped. It might take you a while to locate. It might take you a while to locate, get the clamp out and then start driving. We would never want to drive with a clamp on because you mess up your vehicle. The same way there are clamps sometimes. There is a block, there is a mani, mani meaning hajj is something between you and the acceptance of the dua, your oppression of others. We cannot oppress someone and expect that our duas are going to be answered. No. But Allah says through His mercy, sometimes He gives it to you even if you don't deserve it. That's the mercy of Allah. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why when Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the dua that he made to say, Oh Allah, my offspring, let my offspring have some goodness and iman and so on. And be. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about sustenance. And he says, as for sustenance, I will give it even to the kuffar for a while. Qala wa man kafara. فَأُمَتِّعُهُ قَلِيلًا ثُمَّ أَضْطَرُهُ إِلَىٰ عَذَابِ النَّارِ Allah says, even those who disbelieve, I will grant them goodness, I will give them the sustenance of this dunya, mata', mata' meaning the provisions of this dunya, I will grant them for a while. Those who turn during that while, good news to them. Those who don't, they have a very severe abode awaiting them. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us an understanding. Sometimes Allah gives you that giving is actually a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It does not necessarily mean He's happy with you. And sometimes when He has taken it away from you, it could be a sign of His love for you. Let's answer the question why or how. How is that the case? Allah took something away from me, it's a sign of His love. You see, if you have a man who's very healthy, may Allah grant us good health. You have a man who's very wealthy, mashallah, may Allah grant us wealth. See, I mean, he's loud, mashallah. <laughs> may Allah grant us all forms of goodness, alhamdulillah. 
We ask Allah to grant us goodness. If a person doesn't have a problem, doesn't have a problem, sometimes it leads them to forget Allah. It leads them sometimes to forget Allah. Everything is running as per course. You know, you have the latest vehicle, everything is on course, no health problem, no marital problem, no nothing, no stress whatsoever. So there was a young boy who told me and he said, you can give my example in the talks and I've said it a few times so far. He says, you know, for 25 years, I never read a salah. I barely attended the, the Eid, forget about the Jum'ah. And I come from a wealthy family and I've had everything on the block. He says, and I realize that as a gift, Allah made me suffer some very big problem at the age of 30, at 25. Huge problem. For the first time in my life, I actually raised my hands and said, Ya Rabbi, Ya Allah. And he says, from that day to now, I haven't left salah and I haven't left anything. I've just been regular and I found the comfort I always needed. So he says it was a gift of Allah that I started suffering. Without that suffering, I would never have turned to Allah, he says. This is one man's example. We have something to learn from that example. Are we going to wait for something big, negative to happen in our lives before we come to the musallah? Before we obey Allah, before we leave the gambling, before we leave the drinking, before we leave the drugs, before we leave whatever womenizing and so on we are doing. Are we waiting for something major to happen? Well, if Allah loves you, that major thing is going to come because if that's what will make you leave it, Allah might do it for you if He loves you. Allahu Akbar. Inna Allah idha ahabba abdan ibtala. When Allah loves someone, He tests them. So He keeps them occupied with something. Because now you're budgeting, your money is not enough, so you can't really spend on the gambling. You can't really spend here. You can't, you suffered a big loss. You went underground, but Allah's keeping you now in the masjid and He's keeping you check. You have a health problem, so no more zina. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Are we waiting for that day to stop it or can we stop it now? That's the question. Then we want to make big, big du'as to Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Allah. But we haven't yet cleared our slate, as I have said in, at the beginning. So these are just examples for us to think. Today is a Friday, Jum'ah. We come to the masjid, mashallah. For what? To listen to something that we can take back for the rest of the week and we ponder over it. It must affect us. It must impact upon us. We must change our lives with these messages. They are so important that we should be arriving in the masjid early to listen to them. We have time for Allah. You find a person, if they were to tell you, listen, you know what? And look, I'm going to give you an example below the cuff. Or should I say below the belt? I wanted to say cuff, but you know, the proper saying is the belt. Some of us don't wear it. So, <laughs> the truth is, if we were to say, if we were to say that a pop star is arriving from the United States of America and at three o'clock you have a meeting with them, I'm now talking, okay, arguably, you might want to debate with it, but arguably, we're giving an example. The bulk of people would arrive there well before the time to get the best seats. Am I right? Am I right? The bulk of people would arrive there well before time to get seats. And I'm not saying our Muslims will not be there. These are diplomatic terms. <laughs> I'm not saying our Muslims will not be there. But we need to know something. When Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal has called out success. We're running in five minutes late. Imam is about to say, as you join, you're running, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You could do better for a pop star than you did for Allah. There we are. This is reality on the ground. Someone might argue, well, that's once. To be honest with you, it shows dedication, nothing else. If you're dedicated to your Rabb, that pop star can come back again and again, you'll probably invite them home. Allahu Akbar. Develop a link with them. And then you tell everyone, hey, I know that pop star. You know, don't tell anyone, but me and Madonna are chums. <laughs> Allah protect us. Can we say that about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? To say, alhamdulillah, we, we try to develop our link with Allah. Okay, we don't want to brag, but in your heart, can you say, hey, Masha, I'm trying to develop my link with my maker. Today, I challenge all of you. Let us all be able to say to ourselves in our hearts that I want to develop a link with my maker. Then make dua and see how quickly it is responded. Believe me, the hadith says, Ta'arraf ila Allahi fi rakhai, ya'rifka fi shidda. Get close to Allah at times of ease. 
When there's nothing wrong as such in your life, the day you have an issue, Allah will come to you. Allahu Akbar. Allah will get close to you. We know another hadith where the Prophet ﷺ speaks about how when we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or when we get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a hand span, he comes a whole foot. If we get to him walking, he rushes towards us. Allahu Akbar. So here we are. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. There is another block that comes between us and the response of our du'as. I will take it directly from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ذَكَرَ الرَّجُلَ يُطِيلُ السَّفَرَ يَقُولُ يَا رَبِّ يَا رَبِّ وَمَلْبَسُهُ حَرَامُ وَمَطْعَمُهُ حَرَامُ وَغُذِّيَ بِالْحَرَامُ فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لِذَلِكَ the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he makes mention of a man who has engaged and embarked on a long journey. Now he is in need of something and he raises his hands to the skies and he says, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Oh my Rabb, Oh my Rabb. But his clothing is haram, his drink is haram, his food is haram, his body has been nourished with haram. The hadith says, how does that one expect to be responded to? How? Still out of the mercy of Allah, he might get something. But how does he expect to be responded to? When his food is haram, his drink is haram, he's been nourished. You know how deadly that statement is. Nourished by haram means you might be eating veggies. But how did you make the money to buy those veggies? That's what it means. Allahu Akbar. It's included in it. So sometimes we think, no brother, just give me water. But brother, the water that you are buying now, H2O, people say you cannot have a certification of halal on water. No, you can. But that only you would know, your Rabb would know. How did you earn the money to buy that? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us cleanse our act. So if we are worried about our income, we're worried about whatever else we, you know, in our lives that comes into our mouths, as well as that which comes out of our mouths, such as the, the words, sometimes we, we're busy hurting people with swear words. How do you expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to respond to your dua? So we clean up that entire act, then raise your hands, see what happens. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who are always responded to when we raise our hands. Then we need to know, the hadith says, يُسْتَجَابُ لِأَحَدِكُمْ مَا لَمْ يَسْتَعْجِبْ Your duas, all of them, will be responded to for as long as you don't make haste. So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is isti'jab? What is it to make haste? So he says, أَنْ يَقُولَ أَحَدُكُمْ دَعَوْتُ دَعَوْتُ فَلَمْ يُسْتَجَبْ لِي For one of you to say, I've been making dua and I've been making more dua. Where's the response? It's not coming yet. That means you're making haste. Allah knows when it's right for you. And sometimes Allah, as I said, through His mercy, has done something so that you can remain in closer contact with Him. I give you another example. There was a certain brother had a medical condition. This again, he told me, you can give my example. He had a medical condition in another continent altogether. And he was a very pious lad, mashallah. You know, he had his beard grown. He had, mashallah, masjid all the time, making dua. And somehow, somewhere, someone told him, you can have this thing fixed. So he went overseas elsewhere and he had this op. And it came right one time. It came right, mashallah. That day, he says, I looked into the mirror and I was so excited. I saw myself perfect once again. His beard was gone. Everything else gone. He wanted to test what the clubs are all about. He shifted in this way and that way. Allah protect us. He says, Wallahi, after some time, when I looked back in the mirror, I saw the problem coming back. It was to do with his eyes being squint, completely squint. He says, after that, I looked in the mirror and I seen this thing and I, I wiped my eyes again. I looked in there again. And I said, what's going on here? And he says, that's when I realized that Allah did me a favor by taking me out of this. And in return, I went back into this mess. I went into something I never ever have been into in the past just because my friends used to talk about it and I was too shy to go there. And he says, now I realize that my squintness was a gift from Allah. It kept me away from so much and it kept people away from me besides the genuine. Now this someone who is ill is telling us. So what about us? 
Don't we realize the gift of Allah? When Allah has kept you in a condition, sometimes He will grant you Jannah in return for your patience upon that condition. There is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, whomsoever I have taken his eyes away in the dunya, I give him Jannah in return. There you are. I give him Jannah. That hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us through the lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that if there is anyone whose eyes I have taken away, I have blinded them in the dunya and they have been patient in that regard, I give them Jannah in return. Jannah in return. We ask Allah to open our doors. I have said much, but as you know, on a Friday, we just listen to a little bit. There is still a lot that we could say about dua. We make dua to Allah. We start off by sending blessings and salutations to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we end in the same way. Then once we've made the dua, as Allah says to Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salatu wa salam, قَالَ قَدْ أُجِيبَتْ دَعْوَتُكُمَا فَاسْتَقِيمَا وَلَا تَتَّبِعَانِّ سَبِيلَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ O oh Musa, O oh Harun, may peace be upon them. Allah is telling them, we have responded your dua. You made a dua for the destruction of Fir'aun, we responded to that. But now in the interim, whilst that is going to happen, make sure that you are steadfast. We have a lesson to learn from that. Allah says, make sure you are steadfast and do not follow those who do not know. Those who are deviant. Don't follow the kuffar. Don't follow the others. Because we, there is no point in making a dua. And once we've made the dua, we now transgress. In the same way that we cleared our slate before making the dua, ensure that it is as clean after making the dua. Sometimes Allah might give you one thing you ask for. And after that, if you've transgressed, the next thing doesn't come. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleanse our hearts. May He help us become more conscious of ourselves. May He help us love one another solely for his sake because we share the shahada we could have differences in many things even in food some people eat vegetables alone whilst others might not have red meat whilst others would probably have fish and so on we have differences in a few other items as well our colors are different our sizes are different our levels of uh, finance don't completely different together with that we love each other for the pleasure of allah we love each other for, for the pleasure of Allah. The minute you start feeling hatred for a fellow believer in your heart, that is the minute you should know that shaitan is getting hold of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to love one another and to understand that even though we are on different levels, we should be assisting one another, not developing hatred against one another until we meet again.